Chena, 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 everybody! And welcome to this very new setup. Yes, it's been a thing for every video now that I keep changing backgrounds and setup because I never get happy with anything. <laughs> but now it looks like I'm gonna be streaming video games or having a podcast, but no, I'm just having a headset and a microphone because today I am recording the voiceover for my aqua wig tutorial. Yes, very first wig tutorial on this channel. Bear with me. I, I hope this works out. This is a this is a whole new format. So please tell me what you think and what can be improved and what I should change on to next time. Let's get to it. Ooh. We're starting off with two wigs, because every Square Enix character, at least Kingdom Hearts, has really thick hair. So we actually are gonna combine two wigs into one wig. To do that, we chop off the wefts from one wig and are later gonna sew it on top of another wig. The wefts are the strings of hair that is sewn on top of the net. So I take a scissor and I cut apart the netting between each weft. What you can also do is use a seam ripper because the wefts are sewn on top of the wig net, but I was lazy and didn't do that. But <laughs> I ended up doing that later anyways because I wanted a neat nice look on my new wig. So that's what we're gonna do first. Here we can see me showing off the skin cap of the wig. So on most wigs that I've worked with at least, you have a skin cap, which is a tiny bit of some kind, it's some kind of plastic, which is supposed to make it look like a scalp that hair grows out of. We need this for later, so we're gonna save it and take real good care of it because we're gonna use it to hide some things later. <laughs> so this skin cap is a point skin cap. You can also have skin caps that are more like a parting. We don't want that for this wig. I actually, one of the wigs uh, I worked with, since I was working with two wigs, one of them had a parting skin cap and the other one had a point. So the parting skin cap I have I kept because if I need to use it for another project, but we're not gonna use it for aqua. But, so we need a point skin cap. This is how I store my wefts. <laughs> um, before, I just kept the wefts in a bag and they become all tangled up and messy. And nowadays, I keep them all pinned to a mannequin. Yes, so it looks like a hair skirt. This was a new thing for me. I've only done like a sloppy kind of version of this on another wig, but not a proper one. We're doing a parting. Yeah, not like partying, like we're gonna have a party. Like, that would be nice as well. Come to my Patreon. Um, because now we're gonna do a really defined part, which I've never done before, like I said, which is why I don't have that good footage of it. Because this was mainly me <laughs> experimenting on what and how I was supposed to do this. And during the process, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I had to call out to all my cosplayer friends and be like, how do I save this? Because it wasn't working the way I wanted it to. So I would recommend you watch Arda's tutorial on how to do wig partings. I'm gonna link it somewhere around here, maybe up there or down there somewhere. Um, because that was the one I followed when I did this. So I didn't feel confident enough to talk about how I was doing it. After this, I've done it once more on my anti-aqua wig. Because yes, she has a name now. It's not Aquan Art anymore. With my experience, I did a combination of both sewing and glue. Because I hate using glue in wigs. Because I feel like it never really holds the wigs together but in the end it was actually a lot easier to shape the part into the shape I wanted it to be with glue instead of sewing so I ended up sewing them onto the wig and then attach glue later to shape the parting the way I wanted them to 
Maybe I'll do a better in-depth tutorial about that later, now that I know what I'm doing. One of the important things now, because if you watch Arda's wig tutorial on this, it's a lot less hair where they do the parting. So they don't really have to keep this in mind. But if you use assist wigs like I did, they have tons of hair. So be really careful that the hair lies the way that you want it to when the parting is there. Because now that you're attaching new hair, the hair underneath that hair will be permanently in place in the way that you placed it beforehand. Do you understand? So if you have hair going this direction, so parting hair this direction, the ha this hair will never be going that direction again. You have now attached it in that direction. So be careful that it, go that it goes in the, w in the way that you want them to. Keep that in mind. So now what I've done uh, outside of the camera once again, because I forgot to record it. I cut off the length of the hair. As you know, Aqua's hair is about this length and this wig was about below boob length. Uh, so I cut off a big chunk of the hair length and kept that hair to do tiny little wig strands. But Hannah, why are you doing weird wig strands? Well, these are a good way to raise mistakes. <laughs> so in the end, I used these for the neck hair. I used them on the side hair that has, she has on the sides of her face because I had cut it too short and then I wanted it longer. So then I could just take the little glue strands, attach them on the wig net, all of a sudden it was longer again. So it's like an easy way to erase your mistakes and the neck hair wasn't as full as I'd like it to be so I could just attach these ones little babies there. So what I'm doing, I'm using fabric glue. Um, you can probably use like an all-around glue as well. But so I take a little strip of wig hair. I take, I take glue on my fingers. I submerge, I cover the ends of a lot of glue. So uh, every little strand of hair is covered with glue. And then after it's dried in like 30 minutes for this gl particular glue, I chop off the ends because uh, so they have a more chopped off straight edge because that makes it easier for me, in my opinion, to apply them later on in the wig. Remember that we removed the skin cap now we're gonna fill in that hole because now there's a oh <laughs> my hard drive is vibrating i was scared um <clears throat> okay so now we're gonna fill in that hole that we created due to the skin cap removal <laughs> it sounds like a plastic surgery experiment but we're just gonna line up wefts along the edges of the hole sew them into place no glue you can use glue if you want to but i just don't like using glue in wigs in the end you filled in the entire thing and yes you can see the wefts like the webbing of the wefts but don't worry we're gonna fix that very soon because now we are heating the parting so that it goes in the direction that we want to and see it's so much hair now in the parting that you can't even see the skin cap hole. Now we're at the point of using the skin cap. I've never seen this done before. It's probably been done before, but I thought I was really clever for thinking this up. Uh, what I did was back here, hopefully I'm editing it in a circle or something, back at the end of the parting, it was an awkward transition from parting to the rest of the hair. So what I did was I took the circle, this, and then I cut a slit into the circle, like down there. And be careful to not cut any of the hair that's attached to the skin cap, because you don't want to chop off any of the hair. So be careful, just cut the plastic. And then I just 
took each part, like each half of the skin cap of the parting. So what you're gonna do is you take this circle that has now a slit down, you open it up so it looks like a Pac-Man, basically. You take the Pac-Man, eat up the parting from, from behind, so one Pac-Man half is on one side of the parting, one Pac-Man half is on the other side of the parting. It disguises the end. Wasn't that clever? And how did I attach this? With glue. <laughs> I ended up using glue because it was just too much hair and the plastic was so stiff that I, I couldn't I couldn't sew it. It didn't work out. So I attached it with glue. But once again, be careful that the hair underneath where you glue is laying the proper way that you want it to. Also, when you glue this down, be careful that you're not only gluing it on top of the hair that's just on top, because then it will be able to wobble around. You want it actually fastened to the wig net, so it actually just sits firmly onto the wig. Okay, now to the most boring part ever, but the one part that I've started doing with like basically all of my wigs. Combining the wigs. So you're gonna take the hair, the wefts that we cut off from the previous wig that we've stored on the mannequin. And you're just gonna sew them in between the existing wefts on the wig you're working on. So it basically becomes twice as many wefts. I was working from this point you see here down towards neck. So basically, basically from here down. So here down. Why? Because I have a huge head <laughs> and I don't want it to look any bigger. So I don't want to put on a lot of volume over here. I ended up with a few wefts, um, like two wefts that I wasn't using, so I ended up putting them up here anyways. But keep in mind that the more webs you put in, the thicker the hair will become and the bigger your hair will look if you don't style it properly. So from this point down to the neck, I was sewing and attaching webs. Once again, you can use hot glue for this step. I've seen multiple people do it, but I don't like it. 